ladies and gentlemen, we are now coming to Readly, which is a very interesting company. Uh, many of you will know it as a user or even as a partner, as a publishing company who is a client of Readly. And we are very happy to have Maria Hedengren from Sweden here. She's CEO of Readly and will talk us um, through what the data that Readly is collecting can tell us, us as publishers. Isabella, please go for the video. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, grandiose intro. Uh, yeah, so I'm Maria Hellengren. I'm the CEO of Readly, uh, the European category leader in all you can read uh, magazine subscriptions. Um, and I will share my presentation here. Let's hope it works. There we go. So the topic of today is data. Uh, 40 billion to be exact. And uh, the question is, what can we tell from the data and can we predict the future from it? So I'm very honored to be here to, to share some of our insights with you. But first, who am I? Uh, I've been uh, for about two years now at Readly, but I come from over 20 years now in IT and tech companies. So uh, my background has a lot to do with uh, international rapid growth and using data as the source of the business tech and data is the thing that is really driving the success of the many businesses I work for. Most recently, I settled, which is in mobile payments, which is also very transaction heavy business. But the agenda today is just briefly about Readly and some of the data that we generate and some insights in reading and trends. And then of course, can data predict the future? That's the question. But again, what are we? Readly is the European category leader within all you can read magazine apps. And where do I draw these conclusions from? Well, we have collaborations with approximately 900 publishers today in 11 markets. And Germany uh, is our largest market today, uh, looking at revenue and number of subscribers, followed by uh, Sweden and UK in joint second place. But we are really a global uh, business. We have users in approximately 50 countries today. Uh, so users on all continents. And our purpose is to bring the magic of magazines into the future, because we believe that when you read a magazine, it's truly entering a, a magical world, a, almost a parallel world where you can live um, through your passions, your interests, and get educated, entertained, and inspired. So topic of today, again, data. And here are some snapshots, some data points about Readly and 2020, the past year. Today, we have approximately 50 titles available on the platform. And believe it or not, 99 million issues were read only last year, coming from 140,000 available um, issues. And, uh, you know, why have we this high readership? Well, for one thing, it's an international platform. Our readers can access content from any part of the world where we have content. And uh, did you know that of the readership on Readly is uh, international uh, titles? And how we measure international is the title is issued uh, by a publisher in another country than where the subscriber resides. So it's highly appreciated by our readers to really get access to, to magazines from all over the world. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is 13 titles on average are read by our readers. That is very high uh, compared to uh, the seldom reader or the sometimes reader, for example. Uh, so very high readership and actually 66 percent of our subscribers when we do 
uh, surveys say that they have started to read titles that they've never read before after joining Readly. So it's really opening up a world for both the reader, but also the publisher to get access to completely new readership. And uh, well, another factor, of course, that is driving so much uh, readership, so many issues read, is our growth. Uh, in Q1, we grew the number of subscribers, paying subscribers, fully paying subscribers by 37% compared to the same period last year. So um, here is uh, something else that we can see in our data. Uh, you know, we have a data pool of 40 billion data points today, and we grow by 800 million data points every month. Our auditors, we are audited by PwC. When they audited us last year, uh, they did some data analysis uh, to validate the figures. And uh, they said that we have 13 times as much data as, for example, the entire Ericsson global business have in their business system. So it's a credible amount of data. So what can we see? We can see what people read, when they read it, what articles were at the most, what covers were looked at the most uh, and attracted the most attention. And um, here are some covers uh, of uh, the titles in different countries that attracted highest readership uh, in the UK, in Germany, in Sweden, Italy, and in the US. Highest readership in terms of unique readers even. So um, I will give you some more goodies and data insights further on in this presentation. But, uh, you know, maybe you know of a professor, a Swedish professor, unfortunately he's, he passed away, but his name is Hans Rutling. And um, he said uh, he was a very data-driven person uh, working with the UN and looking at the global trends of various sorts. I hope you know about him, but he said numbers are boring people are interesting and we couldn't agree more. So in 2019, we decided to make all of these data points come alive and to see who are our readers, you know, what are they um, interested in? What inspires them? What attracts their uh, reading time? Uh, numbers are boring, people are interesting. And, uh, you know, we agree. So that's why we created a new tool for the publishing industry called Readly Insight. It's a way for us to use all of these 40 billion data points uh, to come alive and show you uh, what the people that uh, read on Readly, what they really like, how long do they stay on different pages, etc. So it's a very advanced interactive dashboard tool, like a BI system, very user-friendly. Uh, and uh, I will uh, show you here a little bit uh, what it looks like. Um, this is just some flavor of the different dashboards. There is so much more, but this is just to give you a flavor of what it looks like. Um, I mean, the data on Readly is quite frankly, it's quite unique. You know, as, as the European category leader with readers in 50 markets uh, and with nine publishers and all of these 40 million data points, we can provide insight about reader preferences and behavior that it's really unparalleled. And uh, I'm sure you work a lot with data as well. Many of you might have your own data scientist teams, for example. But we have here the collective of almost the entire uh, publishing industry in the magazine world, that data uh, at, at our fingertips. So, um, for example, you can see first-hand data, uh, first data on how your print titles, because we're providing PDF uh, versions of print titles, how are they read digitally? Uh, and not only the latest issue, but all the back issues that are here. What kind of articles uh, or evergreen, for example, and continue to attract readership for a long time. Um, it also uh, can show you very precise information about how different ads are performing. 
exactly how many seconds uh, viewing time do they attract and does it differ depending on where in the magazine it's placed for example which is also a great tool for 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 the publishing industry to really optimize uh, revenue generations from ads um and you know I think one of the really good is here is the benchmark capability. So as a publisher uh, using Reading really Insight, you can actually benchmark the performance of your title against the collective of the entire industry of the entire number of titles in your category. So we have, for example, I think over 350 car titles. And so if you have a car title, uh, you would be able to compare how much readership and how is that title compared to the total average of every other car title on, on the uh, platform. And um, let me move to the next slide. So it's really built for publishers to revolutionize the way you analyze reading behavior across your brands and, uh, and get really deep insights um, and data-driven insight real time. So uh, some other concrete examples, uh, you know, exactly by page, how many people read it and for how long. You can also, in this tool, look at uh, re uh, retention and new user acquisition. Uh, and you can also get an overview of um, the revenue per, per title or, you know, where, what title is generating the most revenue for you? So, so the data gives you a really a much more in-depth, uh, both deep and broad understanding of your audience. And that obviously you can use to develop your entire business, uh, not only you know, for the titles that you provide to read. You. And what drives long tail effects of, of uh, back issue reading, for example. So to give you a little bit more flavor, here we have three examples uh, of what we can see in our data. So the first one is Cosmopolitan. You see the uh, uh, cover here with Paris Hilton. Uh, and Cosmopolitan in the UK, they actually increased the number of new readers, new readers by 38% in 2020 when they had this cover. Um, so, so that's, you know, really amazing and great insight for them to use, but, uh, maybe not what you thought is what actually then, uh, attracted the most reading in this title. So after they got attracted by the cover, what attracted the most reading was how to lose a guy in 10 days. Uh, oh, sorry, how not, <laughs> how not to lose a guy in 10 days. Uh, so those kind of things uh, obviously help publishers a lot in thinking about the next issue. Uh, another example here is Rolling Stone in Germany and was very successful in attracting uh, many readers cross-border. I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of cross-border reading uh, with this April issue uh, this year. And uh, what was most interesting about this was the playlist special that they have where they gave readers tip of hidden music treasures. Uh, so besides attracting many readers, this uh, uh, article also generated a lot of favorite markings. So we can see how people bookmark certain titles or uh, certain pages and certain articles because they want to be able to go back, which obviously gives a, even more reading of the same article. Uh, so those are the kind of things they saw. Another example is Swedish L decoration. Uh, and they are very popular for their evergreen material. And in their August issue this year, they had an article uh, called how to create home office for creativity. And in these, in these times, uh, obviously that attracted a lot of readership. And we now see that this, the readership in this uh, title, this issue and this article continue at very high level uh, for the entire year. So uh, these are some examples of what we can see in the data and what the publishers can see themselves when they use Really Insight for continued content uh, development.
But uh, what can data overall from other industries, for example, uh, do to help uh, the publishing industry in getting uh, deeper insights and trying to predict the future? Uh, you see here some uh, famous uh, logos from Spotify, Netflix, Storytel is a Swedish audio uh, book company. And you see here, they've grown massively uh, for the last 10 years, uh, all due to uh, all you can read magazine subscription. So what this tells us is when you get unlimited, when consumer gets unlimited access uh, to content, they use it even more, they read it even more. And that is what we also can see in our data. You remember earlier I said that 66% uh, of our subscribers say that they started to read even more content and new titles that they've never read before. So the digital shift is, as you know, in progress. You see the graph here to the right. That is based on PwC data, where they uh, predict that in 2024, the total industry will still be worth $60 billion. And that uh, the digital channels will represent approximately 29% compared to 24 today. And um, what we've also seen in other industries, for example, uh, Spotify in, in uh, and music, digital streaming music, is that when people start consuming more through these services, their total willingness to pay increases. So what the music industry happened in the music industry is that the total turnover of the entire industry after being in decline for many years actually has come up now to historical levels again. Uh, so this type of uh, way of consuming content increases total consumption and thereby total turnover and money to, to the entire industry. Uh, and here are some other data from PwC study uh, that says that magazine content is actually the most trusted media platform for consumers today. Before daily newspapers, before TV, before radio. Uh, and we know that the concern for fake news, for example, and the desire for quality uh, information and quality content is increasing. So I think there are a lot of things in favor for the magazine industry if we play the cards right. So the question then is, uh, can we predict the future with our data? And uh, this is just a glimpse of where we are today, but we continue to do product development and uh, you know, we will be able to uh, support uh, publishers with predictive forecasting and actually prescriptive. So not only will you be able eventually to see you know, how to, to forecast the readership uh, and the revenue on your titles, but that you could actually get a recommendation, like a prescription from Reading Insight to tell you, you know, if you want to place an ad, where should you do it? Uh, this is the type of ad, this is the type of content, where should you put it in your uh, magazine to get the most uh, out of that? I, I'm really, I just wanna take this opportunity to say I'm, I'm very proud and happy about the analytics team at Readly and our chief content growth officer. Uh, chief um, analytics officer, sorry, Victor Michael. Uh, and uh, he's come from a long uh, range of data driven businesses. And, uh, you know, we keep uh, finding new interesting insights every day. Victor says, you know, that some people say data is the oil, like Victor say, actually, it's the sunshine because it keeps regenerating. It never ends. The more we use it, the more value we get out of it. And that's why. Uh, you know, we have built this tool to help the entire industry with these data insights. So finally, I just want to say, don't hesitate to reach out to me or to, um, you know, our content uh, team or to our data team. Um, and uh, we'd be happy to talk some more to you about, you know, how we use data and how we can, how can we can help you. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, let's open up for some questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Maria. What I take from this, and I think what every publisher in Europe should take from this, is that really is not only about distribution or shipping the magazine to people who read it on, on, on a tablet or what else, but uh, really is also about consulting the publishers and able to consult in, in, in terms of what does work at this kind of 
digital news stand and what the stock are. My first question to you would be, um, are there any kind of examples of expect, unexpected behavior uh, so far? So if you, if you look into your data and it's a huge database as you described, um, uh, where, where things worked out completely different than you would kind of have guessed, maybe from your personal uh, uh, preferences or from uh, traditional publishing yeah. uh, learnings. Oh, there's so much, but I can give you maybe a few examples, uh, which I think can help uh, publishers in, in uh, you know, developing their content. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this in the print world, but, but um, 20% uh, of uh, readers on wedding uh, magazines, which are usually quite sort of tailored to female audience, are men. So there is, I think, opportunity to maybe stick in some content directed towards the man side of the wedding in there. Uh, what can I say more? Um, there is so much. Another thing is uh, uh, comics, for example. In some countries, we have quite a developed comic uh, library. Uh, and uh, I think four out of 10 readers are over 50 years that read the, the comics. Uh, so that's also something to think about when you maybe uh, promote uh, your um, comic uh, titles. Uh, what else? I mean, some things that we see where we also very, in a very direct way, collaborate with publishers to use the insight uh, Scandinavian design. We looked at El Decoration, for example. Uh, Scandinavian design, interior design in specific, is quite popular uh, in Germany, to give an example, and, and other parts of the world. So we, we've seen that a lot of foreign readership is attracted to, to Scandinavian interior design magazines. So we have collaboration with a Swedish publisher where they translate uh, interior design magazines to German and, and um, English and distribute exclusively on reading, uh, on reading. So, I mean, there is so much more, but we don't have all the time in the world, but there are some, some flavors to what we see in the data. I see, okay. Um, for the time being, I don't see uh, any other questions arising uh, on, the, on the chat, but uh, I can only recommend to dive deeper into the world of uh, Readly uh, in terms of uh, what, it, what it really brings for publishing. Maria, you are also a member of the jury of the European magazine. I am. Um, uh, that's a great opportunity. And we have, I mean, we have... Uh, uh, I found it great because you could contribute to the findings uh, when you said, well, that was excellent on Readly, <laughs> or uh, this one doesn't work at all. And maybe this, this brings a different perspective also, instead of just saying, it looks good. <laughs> so in a sense, um, Maria, thank you very much for your thank time you. and all the best to Sweden. I look forward to, to seeing you again in person uh, in the jury of the European Publishing Award. Yeah, the next time I hope we meet really in person, right? I got my first vaccine shot, so next Fantastic. time. Fantastic. I'll see you soon. Now, Thank everything you. is getting better now. And sorry again for technical no interruption for a short period. Thank, Thank you, Maria. You. Thank, Thank you, you and goodbye. Bye. Thank you.